Hey guys, welcome back to my Jurassic Park Raptor comic series. This is episode 9 of 10, so if you aren't caught up with the story so far, please make sure you go back and see the first 8 episodes before watching this one. Now we last left off with Robert Snappier Neck Muldoon taking out some of Biosyn's forces, and Dr. Belvedere being greeted by none other than Dr. Fisher himself. We continue our story in a dark world, with the image of two tyrannosaurs wandering through its barren wasteland. From the distance, a gigantic flock of velociraptors seize the Rexes and begin an assault on the huge beasts. The Tyrannosaurs kill many of the raptors, but slowly and surely, the larger animals are overtaken by the smaller predators, and eventually, both tyrants fall to the awesome size and strength of the savage Velociraptor pack. It's a beautiful dream for the sleeping Celia. Belvedere goes over the complexity of the female's hormones during her nesting stage, and how the dinosaurs are more than likely being overtaken with racial memories, which gives them a sort of contact high. Fisher is quite impressed with her work and is enjoying his time with the raptors. The doctor was a man invited to assist in the recovery of Jurassic Park, and has since been employed by Biosyn. It's revealed that Engine didn't like Fisher nearly as much as Drs. Grant and Sattler, and after dismissing the rogue scientist, he eventually went to the head of Biosyn himself, Bill Steingarten, and began work to locate Hammond's raptors from there. Belvedere herself is working for Biosyn, but her aspirations are only to study the dinosaurs, and wants nothing to do with Fisher himself. The paleontologist walks further away from where Belvedere is staying with the raptors, and comes across some fellow Biosyn agents building a perimeter wall around the dinosaurs. Now, unknowingly trapped in the jungle, these raptors aren't getting away as easily as they have before. Elsewhere in the jungle, Malcolm is continuing to show signs of his fever getting worse. Muldoon suggests that the only hope for the doctor to be the aid of local natives here in the rainforest. Even if it is just herbs, anything is better than nothing. On their trek to find the village, the Chaotician is attacked from behind by a large jungle predator. The Jaguar pounces on his back and slashes the man across the shoulder, before being blasted by Muldoon's gun. Ellie uses her shirt to stop the bleeding and laments that they may get out of the jungle, but she may have to be naked. Muldoon insists that the group keep moving, and reassures the team that their odds of survival will indeed shorten if they give thought to any useless distractions. Luckily for them, they do come across the local village just short of where the Jaguar attacked them. Muldoon, as usual, takes charge and communicates with the natives through a broken understanding of Portuguese and Spanish. They are without a radio, yet do offer to provide a doctor for Ian. The chaotician humorously only has Ellie on his mind while they carry him to receive care, telling the natives he remembered her saying she was going to be naked back there and that the locals need to stay away from her because she's his. The group acknowledges that the Jaguar attack has made his condition worse and Ellie recommends someone staying behind at the village to make sure he remains safe. She asks Alan if he'd like to stay back, but the scientists can't fathom having her in more danger alone with only Muldoon to help her in the jungle. He has more experience out here and tells her to stay put while they get back to civilization. All the while, Ian's fever begins to worsen and hallucinations begin to overtake his mind. Back in California, John Hammond is interrupted by Edgar, one of his trusted aides. Hammond asks if it has anything to do with the unauthorized raid Edgar started on Biosyn without his permission, and while Edgar admits that a retaliation is more than likely, and it's odd that it has yet to happen, that no, it isn't about the corporate battle. He gives Hammond the rundown of Muldoon's disappearance as the radio they've been using to communicate has gone dead and expresses concern about the well-being of the scientists. Hammond orders all available copters to search for them and to spare no expense, and so Engine sends out teams of people to locate and rescue, if necessary, the people employed by John Hammond. They comb the jungle, searching for anything out of the ordinary, and one of them stumbles across an odd patch of greenery that doesn't quite look right. It becomes clear to the pilot that this is in fact a camouflage cloth amongst the trees. He lowers his chopper amongst the foliage and gets the rude awakening of Alf leaping toward the glass of his vehicle. He tilts away just quick enough to miss collision with the raptor and picks up his radio in an effort to communicate back to base and let them know that Fisher is delighted in his boy's accuracy. But Belvedere is terrified for her raptors. She runs down to them and gives them the peace sign, making sure they aren't too startled. She makes sure the animals know she's there to help and not as an enemy, while Dr. Fisher then tells his men to get their pilots in the sky and make sure nobody else finds their hiding place. At the same time, Grant and Muldoon are engaging in a personal debate at the current state their adventure is in. Grant is tired of the constant attacks and dangerous scenarios he and Ellie have been put through and longs for the day he can be done with this endless chase. Muldoon isn't interested in Alan's criticism though, as there is currently the sound of a chopper emanating nearby. Muldoon recognizes the helicopter as one of the engines and races out of the jungle and into an opening in a desperate effort to be seen. Robert holds his knife up to the sunlight and luckily gets the attention of the pilot, who turns around and heads back to pick them up. Unfortunately, a Biosyn pilot sees this and opens fire on the small aircraft. Muldoon raises his gun and fires it directly at the helicopter, making a direct hit and destroying their enemy. Unfortunately, the burning chopper falls directly 
onto Injun's transport and collides with it, creating a fireball of steel debris headed straight for Grant and Muldoon. The two frantically make the only decision they can and jump for the water in a desperate attempt to stay alive. Meanwhile, back in the village, Ellie continues to nurture Malcolm, but his fever seems to be growing worse. Now the raptors are shown to have come full circle and begin guarding new eggs of their own in this strange new world. Fisher reveals that this is just what he was hoping for, and Belvedere displays her eagerness in studying this incredible discovery. The Biosyn operative simply relishes the idea of turning two raptor captives into a healthy six. Wow, I can't believe we are in the home stretch with this series. We've come all the way through nine issues of the story and soon we will see the end of the Raptor comics storyline. This issue was pretty average in my opinion and definitely not as good as the last, but still rather enjoyable. Now, when we get done with this initial series, I want to reassure all of you that this isn't going to be a one-time thing, because luckily for us, there are a lot of Jurassic Park comics to go into. Now, the next series after this ends is actually a sequel story to this called Return to Jurassic Park. And features many of the same characters we've seen in this story so far. Now, to say the series has been a success is putting it lightly. I greatly appreciate all of you who have tuned in every episode to catch up on the story, and want to thank all of you for taking an interest in my content. It really means a lot, and I think it's great that more Jurassic Park fans have access to the knowledge within these storylines, and it's incredible to think about how relevant these may come when talking about future Jurassic World titles. Now, the Return to Jurassic Park series won't start immediately after this one, I'm afraid, simply because they haven't come to me yet. Yet, but I can assure you that as soon as I get my hands on them, the episodes will begin. Now, in the meantime, normal lore videos, as well as retrospectives, dinosaur spotlights, novel excerpts, and Fallen Kingdom news will continue on the channel, and the hype for Return to Jurassic Park will be played accordingly, as I'm just as much excited as you guys are in seeing new Jurassic Park stories outside of the films. I greatly appreciate all of the support you guys have given me, and hope you continue to enjoy my content. I'll see all of you in the next video, and as always guys, take it easy.